as a person wanting to become a landscape architect, I wanted to meet others, and there were no others around anywhere. So I went all the way down to Orange County to a party that they were having, and there is where I met Cortland Paul. And what a gentleman, what an incredible designer and landscape architect with his bow tie. And he was just so excited to, to be with all these landscape architects and was so encouraging and said, study and pass your exams, it's the most important thing. And through his acknowledgement and his um, encouragement, I decided to really get it together and get that license. That was the biggest thing on my bill. And believe me, I got it. <laughs> and um, it made a big difference. I have a special stamp that says certified pig fat on it that I put on all my letters. I chose a path. And I think that partly it was because I really liked being outside. I liked being able to control what the outcome was for the planting, for being outside, for creating landscapes. I wasn't so interested in the, uh, in the architectural world, even though that's what my degree is in. It's really about making places with living materials. And then it changes. It's not static like a building is. So it's continuously giving back. And I think that's a very big part of why I am interested in it. And I love learning about it. I, I can't stop. And I really enjoy negotiating and working with architects. And they love seeing what I do because it's unexpected sometimes because of my ability to edit and really get down to the essence of what makes this place special. And it's just like the garden that I showed you this morning, the one for the woman who had a terminal illness and her husband, all they had was sand, beach sand be it. And how could I make his wife happy in the last few days of her life? And this was a special garden that I developed for them. And it's one of my favorite as well, because it doesn't take any work. All of the conditions match, the salt, air, the salty sand, the minimal amount of water, the maximum amount of color and texture, how you can do something in a very Japanese way, right? Isn't that what we learned there about making it look effortless, but it takes a lot of work, a lot of thinking about not putting too much in or too little. How do you know when it's right? Well, you know it's right when you look at it and you say, okay, that's it. That's a good feeling, especially when you're helping other people through, like these clients, getting through a terminal disease and one spouse is going to be left behind. And that garden can be a wonderful reminder, you see. It makes a memory, it makes a, it makes a person's life richer, I think.